Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Architecture Foundation's Book Week. Um, this is a, a program that we're putting together, um, focusing on publications that have come out in the last year uh, with an emphasis on architecture. And um, we've got a series of online events, of which this is one, um, which kind of precede a day of um, live talks at the Art Workers Guild. Uh, which we're also going to record and are going to be available online. Um, but my huge pleasure uh, to be able to include in the programme Stefano Graziani, a fantastic photographer uh, who's based in Trieste. And uh, he has recently published this very beautiful book, uh, which accompanies an exhibition that's currently on at the Palladio Museum. And the uh, book is called Documents on Raphael, and has been brought out uh, to coincide with the 500th anniversary of the death of Raphael. I think that was last year, but we're a little delayed, but the photographs were certainly taken um, kind of um, during the course of, uh, course of the lockdown. Yeah. Um, and uh, so Stefano is gonna um, talk us through this project, which comprises both his photographs um, and a series of 15 commissioned essays of which I have to confess I am the author of one of them um, but there are kind of range of um, the, the essays for by a range of architects artists writers um, from um, an, an international uh, group and the photographs I'd say are a characteristic of Stefano's work there's a particular emphasis as you'll see on looking at the remnants of Raphael's production as objects in the present world. Uh, so one understands them as, uh, as artifacts which have um, been subject to change over time through weathering, restoration, decay, um, and are kind of recontextualized by the way that they've been presented subsequently. Um, and this is a, a kind of focus which is a kind of characteristic for a lot of Stefano's work where much of which is involved um, working with the existing archives and, and documenting um, objects or kind of where one understands them as physical artifacts in the present world. Stefano, are you, um, I think you're going to share your screen and we're going to, you're going to give us a whistle stop tour through this project. Hi, so thank you, Alice, for the introduction. I think the uh, screen sharing works now. Yes. So we are on the, <clears throat> on the preview of the double spread of the pages. Uh, you said that uh, this is uh, a project that uh, it has a double, I would, uh, I would say a double, uh, a double uh, form. It's a book and it's a show. As far as uh, possible, I always try to, to transform my projects or uh, my research into books. And this, this project comes from, uh, in a way, a grant, which is a grant for a contemporary um, production. So it's not focused on Renaissance studies. And um, in a way to, to apply to this grant, together with the Palladio Museum, uh, we set uh, um, a system of uh, partners which were from the most established like for example the Victoria and Albert Museum to the most uh, we can say independent like the photo Galleriette uh, in Oslo and uh, among uh, like uh, together with the Johnson Museum together with the Atelier Kerstin Gears in Mendrisio and together with the Insel Museum uh, uh, Ombreich in near Dusseldorf. So this was in a way the, the, tri the trial to or the trying to be contemporary, um, presenting a project which has as a head of this institution, a museum which uh, has brings Palladio in the, in the title and a project which has Raphael in the title. So in a way the challenge was very, very big. Mm, the title is Documents on Raphael and uh, documents on Raphael means uh, photographs on Raphael. So the way, in a way, documents, the word documents is a synonym for, uh, for photography. Uh, that means that we can only uh, photograph what we see. 
and uh, quoting Louis Bolz, which I would uh, I would like to, in a self interview he did when he was 27. Um, he described photography as a flat object with uh, uh, five sides. So we know, of course, the four, the four uh, edges, and the fifth side is exactly the surface, uh, which, which means the content of uh, of the photograph, what we see, what we what we document as photographers. Adding to this, uh, I would say, interesting description, like a challenging description, the fact that the only artistic potential of photography uh, uh, lays exactly so is embedded in its uh, documentary uh, potential. Uh, it's an interview, I mean, it's a concept that comes from, I would say, a long time ago, but uh, I believe it's still very valid, it's still very interesting, and uh, this is always what I'm, I'm trying to, to, to do. I try to think that uh, we can document and we can look at things documenting uh, two things, what we see. And of course, we at the same time uh, as uh, authors, as photographer, we also document our point of view towards uh, what we are looking at. So this is a short, uh, I mean, set of ideas which I try to put into the project. And then uh, in a way, Raphael is, <laughs> is a very, uh, how do you say, it's a very, large, like a very um, big presence. It's, uh, it's uh, it, another risk, of course, was uh, working on, on such, a, such, a, such a theme, such a, um, such a subject, which immediately builds in a, who I think hear about a book, which name is Documents for Raphael, builds immediately a prefiguration of how this book should look like. That means probably a book that uh, is uh, weighting at least uh, three, four kilos, which has a very thick uh, hardcover and uh, which uh, on each page uh, is very glossy reproduction of paintings and probably facades or full description of buildings. Uh, this is, was exactly what I didn't want to do. And I also believe that what uh, I did with, uh, of course, I had some collaborations. I had a lot of exchanges with, with the people which uh, collaborate to, to this project. Um, what I could do is exact, was, uh, was possible or is this possible because the book I'm trying to describe uh, exists or, already. So the narration, the studies, the deep studies on Raphael exists and uh, I don't belong to that. I'm not able to, to, to do that. It's not my field. So my field is uh, in a way strictly photographic and that is the place in which I was uh, interested and still I am interested to, to, to act. So the, the lightness of both the form and the content are in a way uh, um, an idea which I was uh, pursuing from the early beginning. It's uh, in a way that then the title, the documents and the Raphael are part of the risk we, we, can, we can take on, uh, on our projects. So describing the photograph, uh, it's always very difficult. I would say that uh, it starts from uh, some photographs which I took, I go in the, in the, in the, in the Raphael gallery where the Raphael cartoons are in the Victoria and Albert Museum. It was a specific moment in which documenting the, the absence of that because they were in a way protected due to the changing of the new light system. So it was in a way a very extremely special moment to, to document. Uh, this is something which uh, you know very well because in a way the texts in which you, you wrote for this project considers uh, the, the documentation of the transportation of the cartoons to the to where they are now, to where they now are that means in the in the Victorian Albert and uh, as you perfectly noticed the cartoons are always invisible so the, the the documentation of these transports this transportation never shows the the cartoons uh, what I was interested in, of course, uh, in the moments in which uh, 
Raphael is visible in the experience we have looking at objects we, we know perfectly. I'm also at the same time interested in, um, of course, in the experience of photography and in this specific, uh, the, um, the possibility of showing a non-dominant point of view on uh, the world. This is why, for example, errors or perspective uh, which uh, we cannot uh, consider as useful for the reproduction, specific reproduction of paintings are visible. Of course, I'm underlying is in, in this double um, spread, the reflection on the glasses. This makes uh, these photographs non particularly uh, useful for the reproduction of the of the painting and uh, of course it shows the experience we have in looking looking at this specific object mm. photography and architecture of course i've been working a lot as you know for um, architects together with architects collaborating in describing uh, buildings in documenting buildings we all have this um, thought or this uh, idea that photography can uh, show the space, can describe a space. Maybe I'm not completely sure about that. Like photography is a flat object, but uh, what I haven't uh, done yet, and this project is uh, in a way, <clears throat> has been a nice uh, starting point to that is the including uh, human beings. So, and to, understand how important human beings are in the in the representation of uh, of space and how much our interest as viewer of pictures these presences are catching so how important are human beings in the in the depiction of the space hmm. again uh, this is La Muta, which is a painting which is uh, in the um, Palazzo Ducale in Urbino. By the way, that's the place also where Raphael was born. Uh, this way of uh, the, the display of La Muta is suggesting a precise point of view from which we should look at the painting, which is central. The light is central. It's, uh, unif it's very... Um, the, the light is very much uh, the same on all the surface. I was exactly, exactly interested in trying to understand and to show how many other point, uh, possible point of view on the same object we can uh, experience. So the experience of looking at the painting is multiple. It includes uh, the caption, it includes uh, the shadow, it includes uh, everything which we can uh, experience when we are there. <laughs> in a way, what uh, Google, I don't know, Google Museum, how it is, it, uh, how, what's the name of it, or this virtual, virtual possible visits of every museum in the world are an illusion. Of course, we can look at uh, museums through, like we are talking now, but uh, the full experience or the possibilities we have of looking at paintings and uh, not only in paintings, but looking at everything is much more wide, much more uh, bigger. <laughs> this is, a, in a way, an experiment of, a, it's a replica. It's a replica of a cartoon in, uh, which I did at, uh, in Urbino. Uh, then I can say what it is. This is the, the loggia of Villa Farnesina, which is a project by Peruzzi. And uh, the frescoes on the ceiling, on the vaults are made by by, by Raphael. I felt like impossible to photograph. Of course, there is a very um, perfect documentation of the frescoes. <laughs> I was again interested in the description of the space of, uh, of the loggia and looking at uh, people, looking at uh, the fresco, including myself in this construction of space. Of course, the photographer, me, in that moment, I was exactly in the same space, in a way, acting, acting kind of the same of building a space uh, together with the people which was uh, at the same time with me in the lodge. Uh, another point is, uh, I think, the landscape, <coughs> the landscape in the, in the realm of the depiction. Uh, the landscape uh, means how, when can we 
describe uh, a photograph as a photograph of a landscape. This has a lot to do with the distance we have from uh, what we see. In this case, it's the distance from the Kiji stable, stable like uh, uh, this is a full original Raphael. And uh, I would say it's one of the most neglected, neglected <laughs> uh, buildings, but uh, it was designed by Raphael. So my approach was, I set the camera at the corner between, uh, this is uh, Salita del Buon Pastore and uh, via, I don't know, I don't remember now, it's written in the captions, <clears throat> it's in Trastevere. I set up the, the point of view very high to, to, to allude to the point of view which a landscape uh, uh, photography should have. And I waited, I waited uh, a, lo a lot making uh, multiple frames, uh, waiting for people, and uh, at the end, uh, selecting these three, plus another one which was actually published in another little booklet, um, alluding two things, um, neorealism, like uh, the cinematographic aspect of neorealism. Neorealism also has one of the, I think, most the strongest uh, images of Italy, which Italy exported and which is alive uh, today. <clears throat> I think also it transformed itself into tourism, but uh, for sure, everything is still there. Uh, and then I had the addition again of people, but people which are much smaller than what we saw before, the two register doing this, uh, uh, you call it um, condition report. Uh, uh, these are smaller and these are figures, probably, ac actually, for sure, acting into uh, a social wor world, into a social context. This is why we can say that this is probably a, a, a picture which we can uh, include in the um, genre of landscape. So I mentioned genre because uh, of course, Raphael also, I think, uh, in a way, evoca uh, make this, I don't know if it's Raphael, but I I'm mean, much interested in this idea of genre into the realm of representation. Genre, because they have been the first uh, institu institutionalization of uh, uh, art. And because in a way, crossing uh, different genre, I believe we can get uh, free of them. So this is the, 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 um, the, something which uh, lie, lays on the in within the project from uh, from the beginning to along all the project. And this uh, starts here starts the 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 Cappella Chigi, which has another approach. Cappella Chigi cannot be seen altogether. Uh, Cappella Chigi can be seen from uh, little parts and from I would say from closer. And I would also say as uh, as before, that uh, the images of Cappella Chigi uh, already exist. So I didn't need to, to repeat images of uh, the Cappella Chigi, which in a way are very uh, easy to find. <coughs> the book has this structure, which puts in the middle of the book all the texts, including the colophon, including the index, including uh, all the informations uh, which are textual. So why, why this? Because probably together with the, we decided that uh, together with the graphic design Francesco Valtolina, which is also art director of Moose uh, magazine. This book is published by Moose, which is a publishing house uh, in Milano. Uh, this, why, why texts or why so many? The original idea was to think precisely about the relation of text and photographs, which are in a way specific and which are in a way um, the captions. So the, the, my first idea was how can we extend a caption of a photograph? Can we extend it to the edge of being a, a short essay, uh, an article, uh, a text? Probably yes. And uh, <laughs> that this, and how, how open can be this position? Probably very much. So as you said at the beginning, it's a different kind of, uh, of, uh, of personalities which collaborate for these texts. Uh, 
uh, very few, which I would say um, Guido Beltramini and Madalena Shimemi, we can consider experts or we can consider, uh, or I could ask precisely something which is uh, strictly related to Raphael. Um, the, other, the other contributors, the other friends uh, were much more open in approaching the lightness of this project. Lightness in the sense that it can be open. And uh, uh, sorry. <laughs> and this, in a way, okay. Then, uh, okay. This is text, so in the projection doesn't make much. Uh, but uh, this is how the texts are put in page. How they are uh, like uh, coming one after the other. Um, they touch different aspects of Raphael, of course, of photography, of uh, philosophy, of love, of. Uh, mm, uh, I don't know. They, they, they bring into the project a lot of uh, many more arguments which uh, I didn't think at the beginning were possible. <coughs> Set of captions. These are caption or titles. We don't know. Um, ends of colophon. And now there is another uh, like in a way in another set of uh, uh, color portfolio which uh, includes uh, the Pantheon, because the Pantheon is the place where the um, Raphael was buried. The uh, Pantheon was, uh, is the place where uh, the tomb of Raphael is, uh, is, um, is, is uh, uh, how do you say? Raphael was able to be buried into the Pantheon. And uh, <laughs> then there is a little set of, photo of photographs uh, with the tapestry, which are in the Gonzaga, uh, sorry, in Palazzo Ducal in Mantova. They are the same, like uh, coming from the same cartoons of, um, of which were done for the tapestry uh, at the 16 chapel, but uh, these are were done for uh, the Gonzaga family. And, uh, I have to say that the tapestry, which I never much considered as uh, objects, because I always felt like, uh, in a way, very distant, is these rooms, which I could uh, visit for, for long. I could uh, freely be in this room for a long time, are the only place, uh, this is the only place which I felt uh, the real permanence of uh, time. So I felt, in a way, these 500 years for the first time which I never felt in the other um, places I visited where Raphael was supposed to, to be, was supposed to be possible to, to see. Negatives, negatives, these are negatives uh, coming from an archive in Rome, the ICCD. And uh, that this is my, my answer to, I asked, and it's impossible to photograph these rooms except from one specific point of view. <laughs> and then uh, basically you have to be, I don't know, then, then <clears throat> your photograph would be approved. So in a way you don't have any space of freedom and uh, uh, which is very far away from the non-dominant uh, point of view, which I was looking for towards uh, such a heavy and present argument. So my response was, okay, I can, uh, I can, uh, I can have these negatives, and I want to keep them as negatives. Uh, so on the right is the the, the Sala di Raffaello, where the Scuola di Atene is, and here on the left, this is the loggia, uh, where the um, sorry, the loggia del Vaticano. Basically, this is the Pope apartment, which of course would be never easy to to visit. Uh, this is also what is on the cover, which is not Raphael. This is the big model which Antonio de Sangallo did right, uh, right after Raphael died. It's a 1 to 30. It's very big. It's enormous. Uh, it, would, it was possible to be visited by the Pope itself. Uh, it was a model to... The Pope would have not been to to see the, the, the end of the construction because uh, it was uh, too old. So the, the thing was, okay, uh, this model would allow you to understand what it is. Hmm. Villa Madama is the last, uh, is the last uh, set of photographs. Now it's a representative, uh, uh, let's say, um, diplomatic, uh, uh, 
place house i don't know it's a political uh, place for uh, meetings so it's a completely glossy i would say clean i also felt like uh, very difficult to to enter i had uh, kind of three to three hours for for seeing it i've been actually at the end interested in uh, in uh, in the gardens and i tried to organize uh, this set of photographs in a way cinematographic again without uh, cutting in the right place and without uh, like uh, it's a it's a as text <clears throat> so it starts uh, <clears throat> right uh, left and then uh, it ends uh, where it ends the 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 the, the series ends final the garden semi final these uh, images of uh, the sea which are appearing twice and uh, which are uh, not uh, related to raffle of course this is, was my license my my place of uh, surviving to to raffle and uh, and saying to and erratic maybe probably yes i don't know but uh, there are two things in which i'm interested first is uh, uh, solaris by tarkovsky so this big uh, planet of uh, water which at the end studies the scientist itself in the in the movie in the film by by tarkovsky second this uh, beautiful essay by jeff wall in which which is uh, entitled photography and the liquid intelligence that uh, clarifies this double aspect of photography one is uh, the liquid like uh, photography happens appears into water because of the bath of development uh, uh, washing and fixing and the other side is this dry aspect which is the lens the lenticular aspect the lens aspect of photography so the apparatus is dry uh, these two worlds uh, are then matching together in in photography and it's also something that we are now losing because uh, uh, in a way this uh, liquid aspect this liquid process we are we are losing because uh, very simply we are getting into another um, another condition of producing uh, photography that is completely electronic and digital so this was uh, how to <laughs> survive and how to at the same time escape from uh, from raphael in a way being still into the the documentary so now i think i've uh, maybe i have uh, just one more picture, if I can share it properly. This is one mm, I I could show too, but uh, uh, this book then was uh, transformed or parallel to the book project. There is a show project, which is uh, in um, in Vicenza at the Palladium Museum, Palladium Museum until the uh, end of February, the 20. Uh, so there are 15 photographs and they are all in one room. So it's in a way a studiolo which uh, has this very strong uh, um, context. So uh, it's, a, it's a Palladian building. And uh, the decision was to keep everything in the same room, to think that uh, the photograph we can see from uh, the center of, uh, of the room, uh, best if seated, like in the installation design, there are some seats. And there is a leaflet where you can uh, recognize the, the photographs, what, what they are, what they show, and where they are in the book. Mm. So in this circular uh, construction of the show, the idea is that uh, there is not a, a defined uh, sequence, like there is not the first, there is not a, uh, how do you say, uh, there is not a precise uh, sequence, it's very circular. You can see, you should uh, be able to see all of them all together there's more more uh, uh, orders like three and uh, for me also this was in a way an experiment which i still didn't uh, test to put everything in one uh, in one space on the four uh, walls and uh, building uh, like a, a studio without uh, as i was trying to describe not uh, a proper sequence uh, for uh, seeing uh, the different works so I think that uh, this is what I was uh, interesting to interested to to tell you, and um, this is how the book uh, and the project has uh, 
has uh, developed. So, thank you, Stefano. That's a beautiful presentation and, and wonderful images. Um, I mean, I'm, as I said at the beginning, you you have often worked in series and looking at archives or bodies of work produced by other artists, other architects. Um, I mean, I know you've been working with the Gordon Matter Clark archive, and I think in the past with Iñaki Abelos and Juan Herreros, uh, um, the, the material that's in the Canadian Centre for Architecture, and always with this interest in um, uh, uh, framing these um, artifacts as, as objects and um, yeah, the, 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 um, in, in, a, in a way kind of rediscovering them. Uh, I guess this project though particularly feels like it's in that tradition, but you're also representing sites that have been photographed many, many times before. And um, I think in my essay in the book, you know, I quote the, the famous kind of Walter Benjamin line about the, um, from the um, work of art in the age of mechanical reproduction about the, the, the way that photography has attacked the, the aura of, of these original objects. Um, so here it feels like there's, a, there's an attempt particularly to, to reclaim some of that aura through the photograph through, through, the, through the photographs to can reassert uh, the, these these sites which we particularly things like the Raphael cartoons or some of the paintings you've shown that have been we've seen in reproduction you know repeatedly um, your project is feels like it's a, it's about kind of reclaiming something of the fragility and the uniqueness of the original object yes i uh, i think so i think that i've been many times attracted by like existing <laughs> documents or existing objects uh, something which uh, <clears throat> also i'm particularly um i like i mean i enjoy taking photographs first of all i enjoy going in specific places i enjoy mm, mm, respond to specific uh, places uh, what you mentioned like the gordon mata clark books for example which uh, the title still has documents it's documents from gordon mata clark personal library and it's a photograph of uh, gordon mata clark personal library that is uh, in a way the the possibility to do to do a portrait of gordon mata clark because that books are not books about gordon mata clark they are books which Gordon Mata Clark uh, owned. Uh, he was reading them. They were uh, probably near his bed. And they are not particularly precious books. You can still find uh, the same, like the same edition, the same uh, object for very cheap. So there's not, they are not uh, precious objects. I also have been interested in doing uh, photographing precious objects, but not because they are precious. So everything we can look at the same way, in a way. This is also something which uh, I think uh, then, trans then photography maybe transformed that in something else. And that is also something uh, that uh, photography can still give us, can give us. Uh, but back to just uh, shortly to the documents on Gordon Monte Clark is, uh, this idea of uh, uh, building a portrait, uh, this idea of doing uh, still lifes, like uh, objects uh, which are laying on a table. And uh, so in a way, they're always uh, thinking about uh, the possibility of uh, uh, going uh, through the genre without being uh, locked into one, because we can be much more open. And this idea on of non-dominant uh, uh, gaze, non-dominant eye, is something which I, you know, I discovered. I, I don't know if discovered, but I really um, felt like important in this last project on uh, we can, if we can say on Raphael, because it's not completely Raphael, because I delegate uh, all the ideas about Raphael to somebody else, <laughs> and also to you, for example. I, in a way felt myself very free in front of object which I knew 
but not completely. And for sure, this was the first uh, uh, opportunity I had to stay in these places uh, properly or for much longer time that uh, I could have had before. So in a way, it's always special. And uh, if I should go back, hmm, I don't know. First, I don't feel like I need to. Second, uh, photographs would probably be slightly different, if not completely different. Because it's also interesting that uh, photography brings itself this idea of the, what's it, what's the, the thing that, uh, not the special moment, but this, uh, the, the Cartier-Bresson uh, decisive moment. And probably um, all moments are <laughs> decisive at the same time, at the same uh, level, how do you say? They are all decisive. So we don't have to believe that there is only one moment and uh, we cannot repeat it. So I think that uh, also this is maybe also this is also maybe why I'm interested in, in very, this very <laughs> uh, frozen objects. But I'm also starting to be interested in uh, human beings, which are not uh, at all. Uh, uh, I always been interested in human beings, looking at uh, them, but uh, never being able to to photograph or to include. And uh, first attempt, uh, serious, but uh, doesn't mean much, is these two condition report. Uh, these two women that are uh, making the condition report of something which comes from Louvre, but it doesn't make much sense. Second is these uh, persons which are walking. Uh, just beside the original Rafa and nobody takes care of it and because they are completely neglected. And um, this is something I've uh, started thinking about, uh, reading the texts of uh, Babette Mangolte. She is a photographer and cinema operator, I don't know, and cinematographer. And she has been working a lot with uh, Trisha Brown, for example, so documenting the performances. And, and in, in his, her text, she's really nice how she describes this potential and this power of documentation and in the collaboration of these two subjects. One is uh, her, the other one is, in, for example, could be Trisha Brown. And in the construction of the space they, they, they built together in one room. So that is, in a way, also what I was trying to say about the the um, loggia of Villa Farnesina, which is Peruzzi, and then there is Raphael on top, but it's also a touristic uh, <laughs> place. You pay the ticket, you get in, and there's full of tourists. Then due to COVID, we were only four or five, but otherwise it's full. You basically queue through that. It, the same is at the Vatican Museum, you queue. You start to queue and you queue till the end. Uh, so that specific moment uh, was, maybe it was decisive because there was, uh, <laughs> <laughs> nobody but uh, uh, like the construction of the space of the people and the human beings and their bodies in this uh, specific special place was uh, was what i was interested in in in, in um, of course Raphael is a special uh, like uh, a special special but we can do that almost uh, everywhere yeah and uh, i mean uh, I think three of the contributors to the, um, the of the texts are, are architects who you have a regular working relationship with, um, with Kirsten Gears, David Van Severen, and Kristen Gantenbein, and um, Bauku um, Pierpaolo has a, has a yeah, text Paolo, in there. Emmanuel, Chris, oh, no. Kirsten. Um, and when you're, I guess, when, when you're working as a photographer with with those practices and you're often in the situation of you know you're not making work of 500 years after the building's been there you're probably making the first images that have ever been made of it <laughs> and um in a sense you know the the expectations around architectural publishing are often that uh you're kind of capturing the the building almost out of time that that it, that, 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 that the things that have interested you in the um the encounters that, you, that you've obviously interested in in documents on Raphael are, are often pushed out of the frame because uh, you know because of when you're taking the photograph and and uh, what the expectations of how the building might be represented are how, how, can you talk a little about how the the interests that you've 
been talking about in this project kind of percolate into the the work you do when you're you're um, commissioned to make a photograph of a new building uh, yeah good uh, good uh, good uh, good question and of course the answers are um, always uh, always different always uh, um, I wouldn't say complicated, but they are always different. Uh, something uh, nice discussing with uh, Emmanuel Christ, for example, it was uh, we did the we did the show together, and it was in Japan, and uh, it was an invitation with the Japan Architectural Association made to Office Christ of Gantenbein, and it was designed by Victoria Easton, the the show, and the title was the last act of design. And the last act of design was uh, was something that uh, actually Manuel said in at the dinner. We were di making dinner together. We were having dinner together, and we were exactly discuss exactly discussing what you were saying. So um, saying that in a way the the the, pho the photographs which are coming when the which are done when the building is uh, finished right after it's finished actually before <laughs> the uh, the owners get in are the last last act of design because they represent they should <laughs> if everything works uh, if the photographer is uh, i mean if there is a a proper collaboration mm, they should be the last act of design, design because they show the the building for for the Exactly when is uh, when is finished, following the the full idea the architect had about it, then the control in a way is lost, and this is uh, one aspect. Second aspect is that uh, many times happens that uh, it has happened to me that this uh, documentation is done much later. And so the building changes and uh, the condition are changing. And uh, I think that uh, I've never been completely into the idea that uh, uh, architectural photographer as should be as a still life. This is something that uh, Luigi Giri was saying, like uh, uh, architectural photography builds, uh, uh, builds this expectation that the building is completely isolated from the rest of uh, the world, what uh, is around. And uh, should be as if it is uh, a still life. Uh, that uh, I wouldn't say. Uh, I think I think I always been escaping that. I always been trying to look at buildings from far away or from very close. I, I try to to in a way simulate uh, or not simulating, but uh, to document the experience we have in front of uh, buildings. So um, I think that any time uh, we have to find different uh, mm, answers to different uh, buildings, I would say, to different uh, collaborations. Uh, very difficult to re make a replica of uh, a standard uh, point of view. Last one for me, Stefano. I mean, is there, are there plans for the exhibition to tour? Uh, there are plans, but we still have to to in a way to properly, there are ideas and uh, like wishes. Uh, we have to set it up uh, a little bit uh, more uh, like, uh, mm, so at the moment, not yet, but there are good uh, good uh, possibilities to, 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 to do that. And uh, yeah, no, maybe also difficult to, to, uh, to announce it now. Mm. Well, so the exhibition's on at the Palladio Museum until January of next year. And it's until uh, February. February of next February year. February 20. And the, the, the publication is available through the Moose website? Yes, the publication is available through Moose website. Uh, there is a link also through my website. And uh, there has been presentations. One was in uh, held in Mendrisio with uh, Atelier Karsten Gears. One was at the uh, Photo Galleriet in Oslo. We actually were uh, guests in the AHO, the architectural school, with uh, Dora Garcia was there because we are old friends and uh, we did something uh, in the past together. So she's in, in Oslo now. And uh, we had this uh, presentation. Another presentation was done in um, in Milano, 
in this uh, independent, uh, interesting uh, bookshop that name is Commerce Commerce, where they they show they show it's a bookshop, very interesting. Just uh, one one thing, they show for a limited uh, time only one publisher, like you get in the in the show in the book in the bookshop, and you can all, all buy only books belonging to one publishing house which is interesting because you understand the relation and also the, the, the curatorial aspect of some of uh, some publishing houses. It was, uh, the presentation was done when Walter Koenig was uh, like uh, the, the, the subject of the, of the bookshop. Uh, there was uh, before Patrick Fry, next will be Spectre Books. So, how do you say uh, solo shows, <laughs> temporary temporary bookshop shows of uh, publishing houses? Stefano, thank you very much, and congratulations to the books. Uh, absolutely sensational. Thank you, thank you very much, Alice. <laughs>